Isotope RX has so many features. It's actually unbelievable. The amount you can do in it, the amount you can fix, it's an absolute godsend for me for anything voiceover or music as well. But there's a few features in there that I feel people don't fully understand or some that you just plain don't know about. So I want to highlight five of them here that really help me day to day in my studio activities and will hopefully speed up the workflow for you guys at home as well. Let's check it out. So first of all, this is an acoustic guitar recording. I've got three microphones on this acoustic guitar. And this is from a video I did before about different microphones on acoustic guitars. You can check it out at the top. Um, but I want to process all of these microphones in the same way because they've all got a common issue. They've all got too much pick attack. So let's just take a listen quickly. I mean, I'm, I'm hammering that thing. And then go on to the SM57. Slightly different tones, but they've all got the same problem. Now, typically we would go through each of them and just apply the different changes to everything, but it's from a multi-track session, so we can actually go into a different view in RX and affect everything at the same time. And it's just these three lines at the top here. And this is called the composite view. So once I click this, it's essentially going to deal with all three tracks as one. So you can see at the top it says composite view, three files. We can listen to the mix of all the three tracks. Okay, great. And then let's go over to our guitar denoise. I'm going to use just the, uh, the pick attack kind of thing and then go on my selection and just hit render. And this is going to do the same thing to all three channels essentially. But even more than that, we've got this there and we can then bring this out into the original three. And you'll see down in the history, it's got guitar denoise, guitar denoise, guitar denoise. So it's actually applied it to them all separately. It's not created a mix and just applied it to the mix. It's played us the mix, but it's applied it to them all separately. So we can just go in and we can change different bits in, in specific ones. We can make it so that just one of them doesn't have that applied or, or whatever it is. To me, that's a game changer. If you want to go into like a multi-track drum session or something, say you've got, uh, I don't know, a stick click throughout the, the track and you want to get rid of it, you can get rid of it on all of them. And then in the same way as you normally would do, just replace the original file with the RX file. So to do that, you can just go up to file and then overwrite original file. And you can do that on each of them and it will just overwrite and you'll have the same processing applied to all three or all 16 tracks, whatever you want to do. That's a game changer for me. The second one is about the search bar because with something like RX, it has so many features, like an unbelievable amount of features that when you're actually going along the side, it can be a little bit daunting sometimes. And there's a load of stuff in there that depending on the task at hand, you might not need to view all of them. If you're doing a voiceover session, you might not need to see that guitar denoise, for example. Well, we can actually thin this down a little bit. At the moment, at the top, we're on all. And you can see if I bring this menu down, we've got different ones. So I've got a VO session as well, and I can just have all my different modules that I use in a VO session um, just come up here. So if I click this, it's gonna get rid of the ones that I don't use for VO. So I don't use guitar, there's various ones that I don't use there. You can create your own one. So if you go to the, the kind of hamburger and add list filter, and let's call this, let's do another voiceover one, voiceover. And then we can say what we do want in there. Well, we don't necessarily want the guitar denoise. I maybe don't specifically want to have wow and flutter in there. I don't want to have maybe music rebalance, whatever it is. And then we can click done editing. And in our voiceover chain now, it's just going to have all the stuff that we've assigned to that filter. So it's a great way of just making it loads quicker to get to the stuff you want. If you don't want the full menu of absolutely everything, you don't need it. Just use the stuff that you need. Now on the subject of making your life easier and making it so that stuff is kind of quicker to get to, you've got some shortcuts in RX by default, but you can also assign your own. And I find these pretty handy to use. And I set up my own for certain modules that I use a lot. So let's check it out. So here's a voiceover session where I've got some breaths that I don't particularly want in there. Let's just take a listen. Nastiness and nastiness, which we don't want. But when you close the drawer, you take out all the top end. Now. Okay, so I've got a breath here and I've got a breath here. Now, typically we can go into our breath control 
and we can say, right, okay, so I want to get rid of this breath here, and then we can click render, and etc. It, it's fine, it works really well, but we can make it even quicker. So let's go up to Isotope RX 10 at the top, and then go to preferences, and go to keyboard. Now, in this instance, I'm on breath control, so let's just type in breath, and we'll see that I've got apply D breath set to control and R. So I've got it as control and R, because to me, like render is, is an R. Um, so what I can actually do is within this, if I just select a breath, then I don't have to go to render on here. I can just press control and R. And it's gonna do it for me. Go to that one, control and R. So the way that we actually assign these key commands is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show you anyway. Uh, if we go into this here, I've just taken it off just so that we can put it back on again. Um, apply D breath and we just click once in here as the tooltip shows us, click once and then press our key command. So I want it to be control and R, it's gone there and then press assign. And you can set that up as whatever you want. Now, it may seem like that's not that much quicker. You still have to select it. But when you're going through a 10 minute voiceover session, it can really save you some time and that time does really mount up. And um, to me, the small amounts of time that you save over the duration of an entire project really do add up. And it makes it so that the whole thing just goes quicker and makes it a bit more of an enjoyable process. So this one is about kind of, <clears throat> correcting your errors or correcting when you've tried to save time. So breath control in that example, um, you can apply it to just a whole passage of audio and it, it works really well. Um, sometimes it can pick up on maybe H sounds or F sounds and think that they're a breath when they're actually not. But regardless of that, maybe it picks up a breath too much or it, it, it attenuates a breath where you don't want it to. You want to keep that breath, but you want to get rid of that breath. Well, we can apply this broad stroke to everything and then just zone in on specific breaths and say, no, don't get rid of that one. That was kind of garbled. So let, let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's just zoom in on this section here, for example, and just take a listen. Okay, sounds all right. Then I've put a, okay, so this breath, Maybe we want to apply uh, the deep breath to the entire thing. Okay, let's go to deep breath and let's apply some pretty extreme settings just to the whole lot. Okay, so it's got rid of loads and loads of breaths. Let's take a listen. Okay, sounds all right. Then I've put a noise gate on it and that's keyed to the kit. Uh, so when it said keyed and that's keyed to the kit, it's misheard that as a breath. Now, we don't want to go in and get rid of absolutely everything we've just done because it removed the breaths brilliantly. But just on that keyed bit, and that's keyed to the kit. We can just select that portion and then go down to our history. And you'll see on breath control on the right hand side, it's got a little kind of dot that says restores the audio from this undo item to the current selection. So what that means is that we can undo just this bit. We can keep everything else the same, but just undo that bit. So let's just do that. Let's go undo just that bit. And it's got rid of that keyed. And that's keyed to the kit, or rather it's brought it back again. So we can apply something in broad strokes to everything. And then we can say, okay, I've made a slight error in telling it to do a broad stroke on that specific bit. Let's just undo that part. So you can do that to anything. So we can say maybe this breath here, we wanna bring it back a little bit. Let's go into it and let's go back to the breath control that we just applied and let's go bring it back to life. And there it is. And it's not done it for absolutely everything, it's just done it for that one specific section. This can be a lifesaver so you don't have to go back over the entire project and you can just do one little selection if you've made a slight mistake. Pretty handy. Finally is a little one, a little tiny one, uh, that I was forever scratching my head about. And I like using the brush tool. I think it's kind of cool to just go down to the brush here or press B and it'll bring up the brush and just say, right, okay, let's go into our instant process. Oh, is that number six? Instant processing? Do you know about instant processing? Let's pretend you don't. You don't have to press the, um, the check on there. You can just press I and it'll bring up instant processing. And then you can go to attenuate, declick, fade, gain, whatever. And let's go to gain. And that's gonna be relative to whatever you've got set here. So let's go minus five. So numbers five and six in one here. Instant processing, it's great, use it. So if you've got instant processing engaged, then you go to your brush and you can say, okay, let's bring down the gain of just this much here. And that's cool, and it will do that. You can press undo. 
but the uh, brush size is kind of mm, it's kind of weird. Sometimes you don't necessarily want to be like that size, or maybe you want it to be a little bit bigger. Maybe you want it to be a little bit smaller, so you can get a little bit more fine in there. Let's say we wanted to get rid of these little bits here, for example. Let's go to our gain and bring that all the way down, so we're absolutely killing it. Well, if we use the, uh, the brush tool on Instant Process, then yeah, it kind of works. It's cool. Let's just go and get rid of that. But it's got rid of kind of some of the other stuff around it as well, or maybe it didn't get rid of enough. Let's set the brush size. So if we go onto the brush here and click and hold on it, brush size, there we go. We can make it pretty enormous or we can make it teeny tiny. So we can go in and we can really just kind of zone in on just specific little bits and say, no, nope, I don't want you. It's even better when you're kind of zoomed in really far and you can say, right, this bit for whatever reason, I don't want. Let's just get rid of that or we can go to our brush size and we can say, let's go a little bit bigger and I want to get rid of you. And you can then just make the brush size however big the specific task that you're doing requires. And I think that's kind of cool. So five and six there, I might have to change the title of this video. No, I'm not gonna do that. So five tips there about how to get the most out of RX and that fifth slash sixth one is just a little one that I find really handy and it was one of those that it left me scratching my head for quite a while and I couldn't kind of work out how to do it and it would kind of stop me using the brush tool sometimes, but now I use it all the time because I can change the size and yeah, that's really handy for me. Hope it's been useful for you. Five, kind of six, tips there about how you can get the most out of RX, five things that you may or may not have known. If there's anything that you're maybe wondering about in RX, please do drop me a, a comment down below and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Or equally, if there's something that you found in Isotope RX that really helped speed up your workflow, please do let me know about it. And yeah, maybe you can teach me a thing or two. But anyway, I'll see you again soon. Take care.